to say Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. And so we'll begin by turning to our announcements, which are found on pages 5 and 6 of our bulletins. I'll first share that the bulletins for June are dedicated to the glory of God and are in loving memory of the following people. Gladys McCall and Marjorie Strongman by Glenn and David Noy and family. George and Hazel Ellis by Irma and family, Peter Miller by Sons and Daughters, Gladys McCall and Marjorie Strongman by Helen and Elmer Hutchinson and family, Shreve Miller and Gordon Ark by Wayne and Janice Trousdale, and Claude and Hazel Caldwell by John and Libby Caldwell and family. Next week we worship together uh, in Tyne Valley at 10 a.m. And just know we will also uh, have communion next Sunday. And then the service will be available online in the evening. We, connect, we continue to collect items for the caring cupboard. And so you can bring those items in and we'll make sure that they get over to the caring cupboard. Just a note that um, tomorrow we do have the funeral for Jimmy Burley. And so we extend our condolences to Barb and Paul and the family. And so this does mean that I will not be at Dylan's tomorrow morning, but I will resume the following week. Uh, coming up this week on Wednesday is the final luncheon before the summer, and so that will be at noon in the meeting room. Stewards have a meeting coming up Tuesday night at 7, so please let myself or Lorraine know if you're unable to attend. The Everidge Reach Committee has their annual car rally coming up on Saturday, June 29th, beginning at 9 a.m., and the starting point will be here in Lot 14. Uh, finally, uh, we are celebrating our graduates during worship uh, on June 30th. If you know anyone graduating from high school or post-secondary program, please let me know. I, I was hoping to know by today. I haven't had anyone officially give me any names. So if you know of someone or if you've been meeting to, uh, please let me know. Those are the announcements I have. Are there any others? Not hearing any, let us gather for worship. Come and gather around the light that sparks hope and new life within us. Come and gather around the light which reminds us of Jesus the Christ our light for the journey. Each morning we rise with gratitude. For your steadfast love, O oh God. And as night falls, we sleep. Trusting in your faithfulness. And so we come to raise our voices in song. For all we do for us. Let us stand and join in our intro, which is found in our world.
God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And now we'll join in with the hymn number 238 in Voices United, How Great Thou Art.
as we sing your praises, as we declare your steadfast love. Let us know your holy presence in the songs we sing, in the words we speak, in the movements of our bodies, and the tokens of your love laid upon the altar before us. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray for your coming kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll now join in our hymn from More Voices, number 37, Each Blade of Grass.
We know too, O oh God, that not everyone has had a loving father in their lives. Some have experienced abuse at the hands of someone who should have shown unconditional love. And so we pray for all of us who are haunted by painful memories or feel anger this day. We pray that they might know your healing, supportive love. Here is, O God, we pray this day and all. Jesus 
spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the word of the Lord.
So often, when we first think of a parable, it's a story with a moral. A story that has a message for us, which in this case is a message about God and Jesus, which is true. A parable is a story that seeks to share an important message with those listening about God and God's kingdom in the Gospels, while also having a little bit of an element of entertainment for those who are listening. And so Jesus made use of parables as a part of how he sought to teach about God's kingdom. Yet parables aren't straightforward either, even if they may seem that way. Often we hear a parable and we might think that the answer is clear and right there in front of us. And easy to understand, but when we dig deeper, there is always more to gain. In some ways I think that's the power of parables. Something new to see each time we read them and hear them. But this isn't the only tool that Jesus used for teaching. He also tended to use what's known as hyperbole. And he used this quite a bit in parables and other ways of teaching. Which is basically an extravagant exaggeration. For example, how many have come from a dinner party or an event that said there was enough food to feed an entire army? Anyone ever said that before? Was there really enough food to feed an entire army? <clears throat> Probably not. When we hear someone say that, we know that's not really what they're saying. But we do understand the intent, which is to convey the message that there was a lot of food, perhaps more than was needed for the people gathered. And so we see this in Jesus' teachings and in the parables, including part of the second, par the ser second parable today, that of the mustard seed. So we're going to invite us to keep all of this in mind as we turn to our reading for today. In his reflection for today's passage, Matthew Meyer Bolton first invites us to consider the wider context of what's happening, and we've already been doing that, but also the wider context of the gospel itself. And so he writes, the gospel of Mark begins with Jesus declaring that the kingdom of God has come near. And Mark's fourth chapter is an opening collection of Jesus' parables, describing what this kingdom or reign or realm is all about. And so this is the focus of our reading, that we're invited to hear anew. So what do these two parables invite us to hear about God's kingdom for today? Well, our first parable is similar, as I said, to the one earlier in chapter 4, about a sower who goes out to sow seeds. But, unlike that first parable, the sower, we're told, just scatters the seeds on the ground. That's it. Just scatters the seeds all around. There's no mention of a plan, so there's no gardening plan, there's no garden plots, no thought or mention of soil type or where the seeds fall. And of course, weather's not even brought into the picture. The seeds are just scattered. And then what happens? Well, truth be told, not very much. We're told the sower goes to bed, the sower wakes. The sower goes to bed again, and the sower wakes. That's it. There's no attempts to water the seeds, to weed around the seeds to let them thrive. Nothing. Yet we're told, Jesus says, that the seeds take root and grow. They sprout, although the sower has had no idea how or why. Because remember, the sower's done absolutely nothing here except scatter the seeds. And what's even more amazing, there's a bit of a harvest, even without that effort in some, on the sower's part. In some ways, when you think about the story, it's really not that interesting. There really isn't any action happening. Seeds planted, seeds grow, they're harvested. So what is Jesus telling us about the kingdom of God? Well, Bolton goes on to say that Jesus says the reign of God grows on its own. Like the miracle of a seed growing in the earth. We scatter seed. That's our role. The seeds grow, however, whether within us or outside us by God's grace alone.
For any of us who are overburdened with worry about the future, or who stress over the adequacy or inadequacy of our own efforts, this comes as consoling, reassuring good news. Helping to build God's kingdom is hard. There are days when it's exhausting. When we find ourselves overwhelmed by all the struggles of this world and overwhelmed by our own struggles, we might feel like that sower. All they have left is to get up and go to bed. And in those moments, we may find it difficult to do all that we desire for God's kingdom. But today's parable reminds us that each day, even when we may feel like we aren't doing all we can, we're still doing something. With each little act of kindness, each gentle word, we're scattering seeds all around us. Seeds of hope, seeds of love, seeds of peace, seeds of life. Acts that at times may not feel like enough, yet it's enough to help those seeds grow. But it's in those moments that we're reminded that it's about more than us. It's about God. It's about what God is doing in this world each and every day, which is what Jesus seeks to remind us of. That even when we struggle and are overwhelmed and all we can do is scatter a few seeds, there is still possibility. These seeds can still grow. They do still grow. Because the life-giving nature of God which pours out upon every living thing. And so I see this parable as a powerful reminder that as we seek to follow Christ, we do not do so alone. Ministry, working towards building God's kingdom, is not work we do alone. We do it in community. But most importantly, we do it trusting in God's steadfast presence to guide us. And trusting that when we struggle and falter or grow weary, God continues to offer blessing upon all that we do. Because the truth is, the kingdom of God is always growing. Always blossoming in ways that we least expect. Which leads us to that second parable in our reading, the mustard seed. And this is where Jesus uses hyperbole. Here, Jesus continues to make his point by describing the mustard seed as the smallest seed of all the earth. And when it grows up, it becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches. Jesus paints quite the image, doesn't he? But for those of anyone who knows about plants, we know that's not quite true. Although the mustard seed is small, it's not the smallest of seeds. There are many seeds out there that are smaller. And when it grows, it definitely doesn't become a large shrub with large branches. So why would Jesus tell such an outlandish thing when talking about the kingdom of God? Well, it's important to first think about who Jesus was talking to. People who knew that what he was saying wasn't true. So they probably had a good chuckle, but also understood the point. Mustard plants grow fast. They're often seen as a weed that would overtake farmland. So they probably found it a little funny that Jesus was comparing the kingdom of God to a mustard plant. Yet Jesus goes on to say that God's kingdom is exactly like that. Ezekiel's image of a tiny 
spring becoming a noble cedar, filled with birds, which is an image of God's miraculous, creative deliverance of the Israelites. Jesus proclaims that the realm of God may be compared to an exceedingly tiny, apparently insignificant thing, becoming, by God's grace, something grand and hospitable. Which leaves us with the question, when we become discouraged about ministry and the future, what is possible with God? How can we imagine beyond what we feel is in front of us? How can we trust that God can and will do wonderful things with whatever it is we have to offer, no matter how big or small it might be? As I consider this parable, this is the message that stands out to me. That even when we feel discouraged about what it is we're called to do, God is standing beside us, helping it to grow. When we feel as though not much good can happen, God is taking the seeds we sow and watering them generously so they might spring forth and offer a new life. So as we look to the future, let us hold on to the message of these two parables. Let us hold on to the image of the mustard seed and trust that as we work together towards building God's kingdom, great things can and do happen, even when we're discouraged or uncertain of what to do. For we do not do this work alone. We have one another. But most importantly, God is always present, always active in the world around us. And for this, we give thanks. Amen. And now let us come before God in this time of confession. Let us pray. <coughs> You are faithful, O God. You are faithful to us through all things. And in all things you call us to trust in your promise that your kingdom will prevail. But sometimes we struggle to see it, O God. Sometimes it's hard to believe that oppression, war, fear, grief, and loneliness can be overcome. Making it hard to see the ways your kingdom is growing around us. Forgive us and help us to see all the ways your kingdom is growing. Like a tiny seed full of hope and love. Amen. <coughs> your love for us, O oh God, is steadfast and through Christ. Forgiveness flows out to us. So let us embrace this gift and trust that new life is yours. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is in Voices United, number 703. In the bulb, there is a flower.
give thanks for all the scattered seeds around us that grow in your love. We give you thanks that through you, hope and love grow in many ways so that we might find encouragement when we need it. And so in this time of prayer, we come to you, seeking to share all our needs, all of our concerns about ourselves, our loved ones, and our world. For we know, O oh God, that it only takes a spark to help offer light and love to one another. And so we pray for all who find themselves filled with despair and grief, that they might know comfort. For all who live in fear, surrounded by violence, that they might come to know peace. And safety. For all who are uncertain of where to turn, who feel as though they have no one they can count on. May your never-ending love surround all your children this day, that hope and new life might be known. We pray this in Christ's name.
is planted. Seeds are scattered and something grows. Seeds are scattered and new life begins. So go from here trusting that just as a tiny seed grows into something great, so too does the love of God. For God's love grows in you and in me this day and always. And so may the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.